Welcome to the Maria Liberati Show, where food meets art, travel, and life. And today we have the absolute pleasure of being joined, or should I say the Piagete, of being joined by the one and only Neapolitan crooner. He's a multi-platinum selling Neapolitan crooner, Patrizio Buoni. And uh, Patrizio, thank you so much for being here today. It's my pleasure, and I'm so flattered that uh, I'm finally being invited to be on your show and that finally we had time because we've been, you know, I hate when artists say we're busy, we're busy. If you if you want something happen, you find a way. If you don't want things to happen, you find an excuse. But in this case, it's been every time I came to Jersey, I played the show and I left. I played the show and I left. And now I had a little bit more time to, you know, to... Uh, um, plan a proper promotion for this my visit and I'm so happy to talk to you and to all the fans uh, that you've been feeding with my music over the years. Yes, yes, I have. And we will definitely be doing that with this interview also. So are you doing a tour in the United States now? Yes, it's going to be, um, and I want to call it a mini tour. Okay. Because the U.S. is obviously over 50 states. It's a it's a big country, yes. big shoes to fill. As a matter of fact, let's face it, it doesn't matter how many millions of records I sold worldwide or how famous I am in, in other territories. Uh, America knows me some territories knows me know me because of my PBS special yes. and some other territories don't know me at all so therefore I'm not really playing all of the US but I will be uh, in Chicago I will be in Boston I will be in New Jersey I will be in New York uh -huh. I will be probably going to Philadelphia I will be going to uh -huh. Pittsburgh uh, I might be going to Nashville some dates are still leading up to be confirmed uh -huh. and uh, uh, some venues are bigger so like the uh -huh. NJ Pack is a is a beautiful nice bigger yes. venue um, Pittsburgh Pittsburgh is the Benidorm Center or the Bayern Hall, if I'm not mistaken. But yes. then we play also in New York. We play, for example, the, the City Winery, which is a very charismatic, jazzy kind of club. Uh -huh. um, and I think the only place in the world that I would consider playing a place like that is New York or somewhere in Jersey. Why? Uh, because there is so much, the cities offer so much entertainment that rest his soul, Tony Bennett or, or uh, 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 Prince used to play on one side Madison Square Garden, but then they play a little jazz club. So um, I'm very, very happy even to play the smaller venues. As a matter of fact, between you and me, playing a smaller venue gives me the possibility or the opportunity to look people in their eyes and, and, and not just be flashed by the, by the spotlights yes. and, and enjoy. And, and so I enjoy either way. So it's a mini tour. I call it the up close and personal Neapolitan tour it's the, the new album called the neapolitan the neapolitan and i did see that i wanted to ask you so is that your most current album the neapolitan yes, yes. and i it's love the... anima corde and and reginella oh my goodness oh wow it just takes <laughs> me you. back to dinners with my grandparents they love to sing well you know they love to sing at dinners and i'm oh my gosh i love that that music <laughs> but you have this this knack of combining like a fusion of Italian and American music together, which I love. Yeah, How did you. you come up with that? You know, I love the way you were definitely keeping alive this traditional music, yeah. this, this like the like songs that I just mentioned. But you also yeah. have that knack for that fusion. How did you? How yeah. did you? Or what influenced you to do that? Well, I didn't know. I didn't. I don't really know how I did all of that. I think what I what I do is who is who I am. Uh -huh. In other words, um, I was raised with the music that you just mentioned. My parents played the old record, the old vinyl records in their restaurant. They had um, um, restaurants in Vienna, in Austria. And I was raised with that music. But on the other side, as a, as a teenager, uh, you know, you kind of question everything your parents <laughs> play you. Yes. And but I couldn't really find the right the genre that I enjoyed as much as the old, elegant, sophisticated, beautiful, powerful voices of the 50s, 60s from the Italian or the Neapolitan music. But gradually I discovered the the rock and roll music of of the United States. So uh -huh. I, I started out with the vocal group the, the Platters singing only you and 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 the great pretender then uh, fell in love with with Elvis Presley 
with uh, Jackie Wilson, with the Everly Brothers, with uh, Paul Anka, with all the 50s and the 60s, which was not natural for my generation, but I just loved the whole um, rock and roll, just the clean cut guys that sang those, those um, you know, those stories of teenage stories, you know, Sweet Little 16, Chuck Berry, Feds Domino, <laughs> Hello Josephine. Um, so later on, I just realized that, and that's probably because of the death of my father. My father died. I was 17 years old. I, I said to myself, Patrizio, but you, you've got a legacy to continue. You, the, the music that you were brought up, it's, it's not supposed to, to die. It's not supposed to, uh, to be forgotten. And it's the music that I fairly enjoyed singing. So I, I invented or I fusioned this this um, taking the Italian, the Neapolitan music and the rock and roll music that I like so much and created a fusion uh, explaining that there is so much Italian music out in this world that people don't even know that it's Itali Italian. For example, um, It's Now or Never, Elvis Presley's It's Now or Never is actually Osole Mio. Yes. Or A Man Without Love by Engelbert Humperdinck is Quando mi innamoro, io do tutto il bene a chi innamorata di te. Or for example, you don't have to say you love me. Io che non vivo. So there's so many beautiful songs. I'm really uh, somebody that sat down and made this a homework, a home exercise to make sure what can I do to make this music, give this music a face? Because don't forget many of the, the singers that I mentioned or the songs that I mentioned are either already very old or they're not anymore among us. So I became the ambassador of that genre and with the, the right concept and with the right record company in 2005, Huh? My uh, my 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 first couple of albums uh, went absolutely th through the roof. We're talking here about a time when there was no social media, so now um, not that it's easy, but now you can easy get thousands of followers and and likes and views and millions of streams. When I sold over a million records, I bought my houses. Uh, I bought myself a house, huh? so I really belong to that generation that was able to. Uh, see the success and invest into my future, uh, in my presence. And as a matter of fact, um, I am very grateful. And therefore, although I never really conquered America, but I scratched the surface, I'm incredibly and grateful uh, because America also gave me a chance. And uh, the fact that I'm talking to you after 18 years of my debut in, in America, 16 years of my debut in America, makes me very, very proud. What I never really wanted to do is, is not that I wanted to, to change who I am, uh -huh. but I wanted some of the Italian, explain first of all, that many Italian songs in the world are worldwide known, but people don't know their Italian songs. As I mentioned, you don't have oh, to say yes. Yo que non vivo, più di un'ora senza te. Yes, yes. Um, A Man Without Love, It's Now or Never, Torna Suriento, which, is, which became Surrender. Yes, yes. Uh, Yo My World. Silla Black, Tom Jones, Elvis Presley, they recorded many Italian songs. So, of course, let's not forget about the old crooners, Dean Martin and Frank yes, Sinatra. Yes, yes. That, of course, recorded some of Italian songs. Um, Return to Me, for example. Return yes. It's, for example, an Italian song, no? Yes. Um, El Martino and who, who not. So that's that was one side. But on the other side, what, what my stamp was uh -huh. that I sang one verse in English. Mm -hmm. and one verse in Italian. So people can listen to the beauty of the language, the original version, but then they can understand what it's all about. That yes. was one thing. And the other thing was that that was very difficult. Mm -hmm. I was very, very eager to find the producer and the funds, the financial funds, to go into a studio, uh -huh. record those songs with a true orchestra. I didn't want to do it on the computer. I didn't want it to sound like a wedding band. Nothing against wedding bands. They're doing great jobs. Right. Um, they're doing great jobs and they're doing a hard job because they have to be there for hours playing and playing. But I wanted to go into the studio like in the old times with the microphone, with the orchestra behind me. Yes. And that's what I've done. I've been lucky. And the rest uh, is history, as they say. And I'm part yes. of the... I was going to say, I love the way you do the Italian and the English because not everybody can understand you know, the Italian. I love when you sing in Italian, but 
when you sing in English too, and you, you kind of fuse that so people can understand also. So, you know, people that okay. don't understand Italian can also understand that. But I, I just think it's so, so wonderful the way you did the, have that fusion going. You, so you see, Maria, I have a soft spot for the old school and the old generation. Yes. One of the reasons is because my dad died. I was 17. So I, I definitely had a, a missing link in my life, not having had a father, a father to be to be brought up with. Yes. Um, I was with my mom, with my grandmother. Um, so I didn't have a father figure other than the music that was left behind and, you know, the, the, some of the elderly friends that I had. <clears throat> so that's one thing. So, and the second thing was that I wanted to introduce the music to a generation where that thought that this kind of music is not cool, that it's not, that it's old stuff from the past. Yes. And what happened is initially, yes, my audience was um, in the age of your your moms, probably, you know, um, even all the elderly people I'm talking here, the initial audience was 70, 60, 70 plus 15 years ago. Yes. Yes. But with with that album being purchased and being played on uh, on PBS and yeah. being advertised all over, um, the grandkids started to look at it and go like, oh, what's that? He's cute, what not? I was 27, I'm 45 now. I was 45 as well, about 20 years ago, uh -huh. 18 years ago. And with that, a total new generation has um, swallowed um, and understood what, I, what I'm doing. And as a matter of fact, on a sad part, uh -huh. um, the, the people that were... 85 90 or maybe 80s then 18 years ago they don't purchase any music anymore or they're maybe not among us anymore so i needed to make sure that i continue to be to stay true to myself who i am yeah but also to introduce my music to an audience that says oh i like that this is this is his style um no matter if the music is old or it's new so now i ran out of ideas which uh -huh. songs to cover because I covered uh -huh. them pretty much all in that genre, in that genre. Yes, right? yes. You know, if you if you take somebody like Harry Connick Jr. or or, or any of those crooners that do the the, uh -huh. the crooner stuff, they do the Sinatra, Ray Charles kind of thing. And there's only that much material that you can cover. And yeah. in the same in the Italian world, there's I'm not as classical as Andrea Bocelli, but I'm not as poppy as a as a pop act. So right. I've done them all. And mm -hmm. what happens? Um, now I am singing original songs. I have a team that writes songs for me and I write them with them. Or I take international songs and I translate them in Italian so people can say, wow, I never heard a, a Crowded House, you know, the band Crowded House. Yes. Don't Dream It's Over yes. in Italian. So, wow, for those who are Italophile and love the language. So, yes, yes. This is who I am. I am the ambassador of, of, that, La, of the La Dolce, Dolce Vita, right? Yes, I, I love that. Because people always ask me, what does La Dolce Vita mean? And I, I just want to tell people, they need to come to one of your concerts and you give them that experience. It's a La Dolce Vita experience. But let them, let's, let's take this opportunity and explain people what Dolce Vita means. Yes, tell Dolce them. Dolce means sweet. Yes. Um, and Vita is the life. And sweet yes. life is just basically the, the, the good life, the sweet life, you know, the having... Enjoy your, your meals, enjoy your company, enjoy life. If you put a shirt on, if you put trousers on, just be aware what you wear. Be part of this universe. Make a be be, I don't say be an influencer and be a be a be a be a be on Instagram and to take selfies. Yes. I'm not talking about that. Just be out there and be part of the world. Be a good example. Uh love life, embrace life, live your life as if it will be the last day. And that's what I like when you switch on the news and you see so much sadness and negativity and war here and problems there. I seem to be a person that, um, yes, gives the people the a little wise lie. Yeah. But we all need a little wise lie every now and then. It, exactly. We we do. And I, I just that music really does that. It just there's no other way to explain it. It definitely is La Dolce Vita experience. That music just brings us back. So 
tell us, I, I guess I was starting to ask, is there anything, what are the things you enjoy when you get to tour the United States? I know it's a lot of work, so you probably don't have a lot of free time, but anything well, that you like, oh, you do? I do. I, I, make, I always make sure that I have a lot of time. That's great. And I must say, not now anymore as it used to be. Right. So I am a married man. Uh -huh. I married uh, about almost five years ago. I uh -huh. my daughter is four years old, so now I will be coming in. I will be doing my dates. I'll take a couple of days here and there to see friends, but then I'm gonna make sure that I end up in some toy store and get some goodies and some oh, clothes yes. for my daughter just to bring her something home. Yes, um, I do that all the time when I do in Australia and South Africa and Latin America. I I love shopping. I love shopping and I like to bring something with me. Um, but before I always loved spending time in the US and in my free time, rent a car, go for a ride, drive, mm -hmm. see how the West Coast looks, how the East Coast looks, um, try the burger here, try the pizza here, go and see Liberty Bell, uh, go and see um, the casinos, uh, see the history, see the culture. It's very important because I believe in order to give people something to make them happy, you gotta, you gotta study the people and yes. to study the people you gotta study the culture and um i did not come to america just to sing for the italian americans or to give the people just my culture but it's a give and take situation so for me it's making love with the audience um <laughs> in, in 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 general speaking is yes, to understand yes. what the desire is uh -huh. so in order to understand the desire is to understand the culture so yes. you know it's also i mean i studied language i studied languages uh -huh. and i spoke always fluent english but the the british sense of humor is different than the Aust yes. australian mm -hmm. the australians different than americans and therefore you know people i remember i sang on stage and and uh, somebody from the team gave me a little piece of paper on the stage uh -huh. and it was written curfew and i didn't know what curfew means <laughs> so things like that like yes. that i had to learn yes yes and you learn non-stop so I really enjoy, and I'm not saying this because I'm doing this interview, I enjoy yes. um, traveling the U.S. And I made so many friends um, in Brooklyn, in New York, in New Jersey. Um, it's just great. And, and, and for everybody out there, you should just travel. Traveling opens your mental horizon yeah. and it gives you the chance to, to understand the world a little bit better. Exactly. And I think... You know, with you, I know you don't, you always say you don't speak all those languages. You speak a lot of different languages, but you don't speak all the languages you sing in, but that you understand a little bit of yeah. each language really helps to understand all the different cultures. And, yeah. and uh, that's right. Yes, definitely. It does. It does. Well, I don't want to take up any more of your time. And I thank you so much for being here. So you will be. I know um, you're going to be on February 16th. You're going to be in Newark, New Jersey at the that's Victoria right. Theater, New Jersey Performing Arts Center. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's great. So hopefully we'll all be there coming out to see you. And I'm sure you're going to let us know when you're back on the East Coast again, because we definitely yeah. want to keep everybody out no, there. No, I am. I am. I am definitely looking forward to it because it's um, the bread of the artist is the applause. Yes. And I'm looking forward to see everybody, to shake hands with the people. And there is one special thing. Yes. I will have on that date exclusively a yes. couple of boxes of my brand new CD, The Neapolitan, oh, that yes. some people might say, but I don't have a CD player or I don't use any CDs anymore. But I'm using the CDs as my signing cards. Plus, it's a beautiful booklet uh -huh. where there's my history inside. It's a beautiful booklet to read. Oh it's a nice God. it's a nice item to, to have yeah. as something to remember. Uh -huh. Sometimes it's good to have something physical. Yes. And, uh, I'm so looking forward to meet you also in person. Yes, Thank you for your yes. support, for your respect. And Thank you. The Neapolitan comes on tour. It comes yes. straight to you, especially uh, to your homes, yes. in your ears, in your, in your CD players, and hopefully in your hearts. Yes, yes. And for everyone, you can also look up Patrizio online on YouTube. And yeah. you have a website, right? Patrizio Buone. Yes, Patrizio Buone dot net. Dot or net. you can follow me on the, the social media. You know, I am not somebody that insists people going, just subscribe and follow me. Oh, yes. If you, feel, if you feel like, go on <laughs> yes. Instagram, on Facebook, Patrizio yes. Buone. 
Okay. If we can maybe type it out so people can. Yes. It's maybe tricky for Americans to write. Yes, it. yes, cool? it is. I will there actually. It will be on the website for my for this show, the Marie Liberati Show dot com. Yeah. I have a website yeah. for this, and uh, I was just going to tell you, I. So my background, I'm actually a chef. I had a cooking series in the U.S. Okay. I'm working on a new cooking series. So maybe when you come back in town, it should be on PBS. Um, I definitely am going to have you. But well, I hope you're going to use my music because oh, my music. Oh, that would be great. It that goes together great. with the music. <laughs> yes, definitely. Food and music. Oh, my gosh. What a, com what a combination. Would you, would you invite me to cook a meal with you together? Yes, I would. You're Neapolitan. Oh, my goodness. I love <laughs> Neapolitan. Anybody that I know that's Neapolitan. My family's Abruzzese, but they yeah? cook well also. But all my Neapolitan friends. Oh, my goodness. But um, Abruzzese, Abruzzese people speak a Neapolitan dialect. Yes. Because the, the, the language from Abruzzo till Calabria is uh -huh. the Neapolitan language. So for those who don't know what Neapol Neapolitan, Neap isn't Neapolitan an ice cream? <laughs> <laughs> but yes. Neapolitan is, is the language of Naples. But yeah. before there was the unification of Italy, the kingdom of Naples Used to very used to be a very potential kingdom, huh? but unfortunately, um, it was too wealthy and too happy, and it just gets sidetracked. And um, unfortunately, we lost uh, the um, the war against uh, the ones that wrote the history books, yes. and therefore, um, from that moment on, Naples became part of a, of a of a different project. Um, the immigration worldwide started, but without the Neapolitans, there wouldn't be pizza. There, there wouldn't, wouldn't be pizza be. in America. Yes. And of course, the all the great coal miners from Abruzzo, they went all to Cleveland and, yes. and, and, and Pittsburgh. So extremely hardworking people. And uh, yeah, let's not forget where we come from. And that's Definitely. very important. Definitely. I always say, and you should not consider yourself only a, an Italian because you're American. Yes. You should consider yourself an Abruzzese. Why? Because being Italian is a geographic definition it's just a definition that that limits you to a geographic definition it's there it's in italy but being abruzzese or being neapolitan is a cultural identity yes. so if i say italian it could be anything yeah but if you say abruzzese or neapolitan Wow, yes. that's, that's where a total new chapter opens up. And uh, I'm looking forward to follow your 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 cooking show and keep yes. my fingers crossed. Yes. I always and thought that I... PBS stands for Patricia Buone special. Yes, <laughs> yes, definitely, definitely. <laughs> All my best to you. Grazie. And much success with your tour. Hopefully we'll, we'll get to meet. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Thank Maria. You. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. 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 Thanks for listening to the Maria Liberati Show. And thanks as always to my producer, Britton Roselle, and this week's special guest, Patrizio Buoni. And be sure to catch Patrizio in Newark, New Jersey on February 16th at the New Jersey Performing Arts Center in the Victoria Theater. And you can also catch him online at patriziobuoni.net. We'll have that um, website posted on the website for this podcast, the MariaLiberatiShow.com. And don't forget to check out our YouTube channel the maria liberati show where you can see the video of this podcast and as always you can find me on marialiberati.com on facebook at chef maria liberati on instagram at maria liberati on twitter at maria liberati on vimeo at maria liberati and also on my Roku channel, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking by Maria Liberati. And as always, you can also find my Gourmand World Award-winning book series, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking at artoflivingprimamedia.com, on Amazon and Kindle, and really anywhere books are sold. And until next time, peace, love, and pasta.